Now with all of the advent of the 1919s, both full auto and semi-auto, you got a browning tool and this thing will do everything on a browning that you need to do except clean the chamber, clean the bore, it'll do everything. It's got all the sizes for all the uh, nuts, bolts, everything else on a, uh, a 1919 for taking off the top cover, working on the buffers, anything you need to do on a 1919. And it's got two punches to punch out any of the pins you need to do. Now, that's for a 1919. When they went to the M60, you got a lot simpler tool. You got the hole for the gas cylinder, you got a screwdriver blade, you got the pin punch, and you've got the wrench. And this tool is for the M60, and it's pretty nice. The next gun, the M73 and the M219, uh, when they worked, uh, you had a broken shell extractor, and this one is kind of unique for a broken shell extractor. It depends on the rim staying on the round. So this is useless if you have a case separation. It only works when you've got a partial problem with the chamber or the extractor broke. This fits over the back of the cartridge case on the rim, and it allows you to lever the round out of the chamber. Um, I don't know how often it happened on an M73 and the 219. I only had a little exposure to those guns, and what exposure I had, I had to hold my nose. I didn't like those guns. They were way too complicated. The, the best feature they had was left and right feed, but that wasn't enough to make up for not working, okay? Especially in a tank when you need a gun. The other end has a standard screwdriver blade, and you can see that this tool has never been used. So it's never even been close to one of those <laughs> M40, M73s or the 219. Now these are fairly inexpensive because there's not a lot of use for them. People don't use them for much. Uh, contrary to the M60 tool, uh, you know, they're probably 15 to 20 bucks. The 1919 tool, you can even find them new in the wrap for $20, $25. So th those are out there. This tool is interesting if you're a collector. Other than that, uh, it's, it's just an interesting tool. Now the Soviets, like us, they built a lot of different kind of guns and they had a lot of different kind of tools. Now one of the older tools is for the Mosin Nagant. It's a screwdriver and it's got several cuts in it so that you can measure various aspects of the mechanical uh, properties of the Mosin Nagant so you can keep it in service. This was usually issued in a little canvas pouch with a cleaning uh, jag and a couple of things like that. These are pretty inexpensive. Uh, some people really look at the proofs even to see which factory made it and then might jack it up. But still, it's a $10, $12 tool. It's, uh, the cuts allow you to check things on the Mosin Nagant. So, you know, you could use a caliper, but this is already pre-made. You can do it, check it out, and it works good. And it looks kind of nice hanging on the workbench when you have customers come in. Now, the Tokarev had a whole range of tools. Now this tool right here is for the sniper. You've got a hex or a pentagon right here for running on the gas. You've got the two cuts, and this cut, because they made this out of substantial material, they have to mill it here so it makes a clearance cut. Now these, uh, you know, proof marks. They have various proof marks, Tula and various other factories, because they were made quite a few places. Now there is another Tukarev tool that doesn't have this and it's the same width all the way up. Uh, both of them are you know, not exactly common, but you do find them and they're probably 20 bucks. And if you've got a Tokarev, there's not much else because most people don't have a socket around that'll fit that. Now, their gas systems are similar to ours. Now you notice that that was a five section for the gas. This is a three section, this is for a different gun. And a three section, like this is similar to what they had on the Hakeem. And there's not much three-sided things that you're gonna find on a workbench. So these kind of tools, while you don't necessarily need them very often, you know, it's, they're under $10. And if you need it, there's not much, not much better, okay? Now, if you're lucky enough to have a Dragunov, this is the tool for the Dragunov. Now you'll notice that this part of the tool looks just like an SKS, an AK, any of those kind of tools, but it has the addition of a wrench. Now, this one's brand new, it's never been on a gun. So, and it's got the, the pin punch, it's got the jag, you know, the, the brush, 
and the other little tool which allows you to adjust the sight and it's got a screwdriver blade. So, you know, a lot of Dragonos came with this tool, but a lot didn't. And frankly, they're not easy to find. Uh, unlike the SKS tool and the uh, AK tool, these probably run 25 or so, where the SKS tool is probably, you know, three to six bucks, the AK one, pretty much the same price. They're a nice tool. This one just happens to be brand new. Now, their machine gun tools were kind of interesting. These just came in, and we're not sure exactly which gun it's for. It's a nice tool. It's got a tiny screwdriver blade on one, of the, one end of this, and the other end is a pin punch. And you've got several nuts and a screwdriver on this end. And this is interesting because down deep in here, there's a screwdriver blade. So this must go over a shaft to work a, a, a screw like an adjustment system. Now, exactly what gun this is for, we don't know yet. We're working on that. Now, this is a similar Russian tool, a little bit different. Now, these are hammers. You know, didn't take as long to figure that out. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's used around another machine gun. Again, we're not sure. These just came in. We're trying to figure out what they are because uh, being a warehouse full of stuff, stuff comes in all the time. We don't always know what it is. People who sold it to us may not know what it is. And it's our job to figure out what it is before we can turn it into merchandise. Because if we don't know what something is, it's not merchandise. If we know what it is, we're going to tell people it's merchandise and we can sell it. So when you're out there, if you find something, you don't know what it is, you know, it might be worth picking up. You never can tell. Now let's get back to you using these tools. Why have these specialized tools? Well, if they do a job that might take an hour using two pairs of vice grips and a screwdriver, or you can do it with a tool in 15 minutes, that's money. That's time in your favor. You get to do a job and finish it and finish it right. During that extra time, you get to do another job. So it's helping you not only with what the job you're doing, but the other jobs that people are waiting for. So don't always think about, oh, that tool is too expensive for me. Look at what it saves you in time, what impression it makes on your customer when you have the right tool if they see you using it. So keep those things in mind. We're all out here to be successful and do what we can. And a lot of times the tool is the key to it. Remember, a good workman doesn't blame his tools because a good workman's got good tools. Okay? You take care and we'll see you next time.